Well, we have some a bit of breaking news as we record this. I'm sure everybody will be all over it on uh, when when you hear this. Former Senator Bob Dole died on Sunday, age of 98. Wow. Uh, that was according to the Elizabeth Dole Foundation. Uh, the former president presidential candidate said earlier this year that he had been diagnosed with stage four lung cancer. His government service began in 1971 when he was the Republican national chairman, culminated in, in 1996 as the GOP presidential nominee nominee in the election that uh, Bill Clinton won. Dole holds the record as the Senate's longest serving Republican leader, um, a post he held for nearly 11 years. Well, he started his public service in the Navy, probably, or mm. the Air Force, I think. I think he fought Just like World War service. II, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah government service. I'll look at that as service or go. government yeah. service. He, I guess Paycheck plane, says government. plane yeah. got shot down or he crashed. He had a ditch. Do you guys know that story? No, and I'm from Kansas. I should uh, know more about it. Maybe there's him. a George Bush thing I'm, I'm mixing up <laughs> here, but I thought Dole was a pilot, too. We can see if he was. Well, And you know who always did a great Bob Dole? Oh, Norm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I can't remember if he was. I think he was a pilot. I think it was. I think he has a World War II connection, but we'll we'll see. 98. Yeah, man. Getting man, into Strom what, Thurmond territory. What has that guy seen? You know, you got to, it's, you, everyone wants to live a long time, but uh, you want to live in interesting times right. too. And maybe, I mean, maybe I'm being naive about this, but it just kind of strikes me that if you happen to be born, you know, he was, he was born in uh, 19, uh, 20, 23, 23. Uh, if you're born in 1523 and you hang out <laughs> until six, 1620, oh. I don't know how much you see. There's a lot of stuff involving smelting. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like we figured out a way to, since you've been born, we figured out a way to melt three other <laughs> alloys. More of the same. But it just seemed like a lot of breakthroughs had to do with like smelting and tanning. Yeah. Leather and the things like that. Him, uh, you say 1923? Mm -hmm. I mean, he probably grew up in a house with no phone in it. Right, of course. He's probably looking at his iPhone. Probably no know, bathroom. A day before he died, you yeah. know, talking to his great grandkids yeah. or whatever. I mean, God damn. What was, what, what was commercial air travel like in 1923? What, what, Non-existent? The Wright brothers are going off a hill. Yeah, Shatner's going into space, you know. I mean, that, that's, a, that's a chunk of time where a lot of shit went down. And by, I'm, again, I'm ashamed not to know this. Uh, I'm looking at his Wikipedia. Um, he enrolled at the University of Kansas the following fall after he graduated. Dole had been a star high school athlete in Russell, Kansas, and Kansas basketball coach Fogg Allen traveled to Russell to recruit him to play for the Jayhawks. Wow. He was, uh, uh, he was a colonel in the Army. He was shot by a Nazi machine gun fire. His upper back at age 21 wasn't expected to live. So was he on the... Ground, yeah. I guess he was. That's why I had the arm. Yeah, thing I'm supposing. The, yeah, the can't hand open thing. his hand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, now, <laughs> let's let's pivot a little bit to Chris Cuomo. So we heard a couple days ago that he was suspended indefinitely. Now he's terminated effective immediately from CNN. Now there, there's a there's another little sliver of information that we may have gotten about this. So the announcement came after uh, an outside law firm was retained to review information about exactly how Cuomo aided Andrew Cuomo, the of course the then governor accused of sexual harassment among other things. A few hours after CNN's announcement, the New York Times reported that a lawyer told CNN of uh, an allegation of sexual misconduct made against Chris Cuomo by a client of hers. According to the Times, the client is a former junior colleague of Cuomo's at another network. A CNN spokesperson said in a statement, based on the report we received regarding Chris's conduct with his brother's defense, he had cause to we had cause to terminate. When new allegations came to us this week, we took them seriously and saw no reason to delay taking immediate action. And he is going to be replaced, it looks like, by Michael Smirkonish, um, who's going to do Cuomo primetime, I assume, rename it. Yeah, I don't think Smirkonish is, is likable. Like, <laughs> Cuomo's had a lot of magnetism mm -hmm. to him. Great hair. Uh, and I'm not sure, I mean, first off, the, the allegations of the inappropriate, you know, workplace, whatever. Oh, pfft. I mean, who knows? Who right. the fuck knows now? You're making, 
I mean, we just talked about the college professor right. commented that the person lost a lot of weight. You know, who knows what this could be? But it's uh, between that and everything else. It's enough for CNN to want to back away real quick. Oh, yeah, that's that's how it works. But again, I always think of the mom. You know, your two sons were All right. riding so incredibly high a year ago. I mean, it was in, insanely high. And then also, she's like a 90-year-old woman. They got to say to her, like, what happened to Andrew? What happened to Chris? She's got to go like, ah, pff, I... Just, uh, he put his hand... <laughs> How do was, I explain this? He, they got on an... Pff, well, Andrew got on an elevator, and then he put his hand mm. on this woman's shoulder, and... And then uh, Chris was trying to help him. <laughs> like, uh-huh. So the, bo- the point is they're both fired. <laughs> they're both gone. They're both moved back in their old rooms. I was going to say, where's the sitcom in this? They move home. They got to move home. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because kinda... didn't didn't Andrew move in temporarily with his sister? Wasn't that the report? Because she's famous. Or who is she married to? Like a designer. I got to look her up. Um, sounds familiar. But either way, now I think Chris has still got his Sirius XM job. I don't think he got shit canned yeah, from the radio he just, gig. He just made an announcement on that about how embarrassed he was and all that. You know, I wonder if he's going to end up somewhere. I also wonder if, um, you know, it's been a while. I mean, Matt Lauer's been on the bench for a while. Oh, yeah. I wonder if he's making right. a comeback. Uh, but again, Matt Lauer's not really a creator. He's a kind of right. facilitator. Mm-hmm. Is a kind of a conduit, you know, it, you have to be what? careful. Uh, by the way, it, it has happened in front of the camera and behind the camera. Mm. There used to be tons of people that were non-writing producers mm. on a sitcom mm-hmm. or something. Everyone was just feeding from the trough. Right. You know what I mean? Like I would literally stand on stage and me and Jimmy would be, you know, going over cue cards and rehearsing the man show. And I could see these people eating. <laughs> Literally, Literally. Just in the just craft service, oh, yeah. work out of bits. Yeah, I haven't. No, yeah, I haven't done one of those quesadillas, and yeah. they're just like eating. And they're like, that guy's getting paid more than me. He had nothing to do with the show, but yep. they've they've all been. They were all kissed in, yep. right? And so there's a lot of fat in the business, mm-hmm. and a lot of folks who guys like Matt Lauer they didn't really create content. They just reported it, sure. or they facilitated mm-hmm. it, or they whatever. Uh, we're going lean and mean. There, we're thin in the herd mm-hmm. a lot. There's not those non-writing producers. The aforementioned Seth MacFarlane, he's a creator. Mm-hmm. He's always going to get paid. Well, you right. can't stop him from getting paid. But the folks that just kind of read the prompter, we can They're get Schmerkarmish to we're do that. We've kind of seen the difference between, say, the Mel Gibsons of the world who may have you know perpetrated whatever, but they're a creator. That guy's a genius. He's a great director. He's a writer, whatever. And like, what's the difference between Matt Lauer and Chris Harrison? Right. Honestly, what what is the what is the ultimate difference? It's just kind of just there to the host traffic copy. Oh, now this, now this, now they're, this. No, com- they're just Mel throwing Gibson it. Did whatever the well, Matt Lauer probably did a lot worse, but you know what I'm saying. Mel I Gibson don't know. Actually, the, is potentially an offensive person. I can't. The Matt wait. Lauer. There, I think there's going to be more of the Matt Lauer thing. There's not as much meat on that bone right. as we think. He has a sort of side to it that mm-hmm. seems pretty plausible. But wait, the, Matt Lauer? Yeah. Oh, I heard this. I oh mean, yeah, he's got. Well, you gotta, you gotta sit next to Garagus because Garagus <laughs> hates these. <laughs> He, he takes the guy's side, but oh yeah, you can look it up, Chris, I guess, or Dawson or something. There, there is, there is, it's not all that cut and dry with Matt Lauer. There's, with the button and the desk. There's and the... more, there's more to it. Well, oh. the, the number one chick who was going after him was also stalking him, like showing up at his house, mm. sexting mm. him and all Ooh. that kind of stuff. Again, <laughs> like if there's an incident where you're accused of, of rape or oh, inappropriate oh. or whatever it is. Uh, that's pretty damning. But then if there's a bunch of shit after that incident of you sexting the person right. or coming to their house or whatever, it, it muddies shit, the waters a little. It, a little different mm-hmm. light gets uh, shed on it. Chris yep. can look. Sorry, did you find something? or looking up horses. Okay. <laughs> Still. <laughs> Google Not me right. Did, what in a horse? <laughs> yeah, so uh, there may be no, but no, Brian's right. You can't just be a traffic cop. You have to build cars. Yeah. Right. That's a direct brave part. For. And right. what I heard is that you are a absolute anti-Semite, and this is the first I'm hearing of it, with your defense of Mel Gibson. Oh, it's all about me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, the yeah. guy makes great movies. Call everybody so, sugar tits. Mia Farrow uh, revealed that 
One of Lauer's alleged victims, Brooke Neville. Mia Farrow? No, Ronan. Oh, Ronan. Sorry, sorry. Okay. Uh, Ronan. Uh, one of his alleged victims named Brooke Neville's said Lauer anally raped her in his hotel room while the two were in Sochi covering the Olympics. That's what I mean. <laughs> but but Farrow also writes that Brooke had additional sexual encounters with Lauer after the initial incident, but she characterized those as, quote, transactional and consented only out of oh. fear that Lauer had over her career. But I think she followed him around a little. I think there was something about her stalking him a little hmm. bit. But Afterwards? Anyway, yeah, anyway. Saying, hey, there's my rapist? Yeah. I, uh, that's <laughs> that's the story I got. Okay. But anyway. Well, um, this this latest school shooting, I just want to bring the it up. Guys who, uh, yes. The guys who go for anal. Butter eater. Uh, you know, during that <laughs> first encounter, I, 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 I'll never have my, my self esteem will never right. be so high that right. I could attempt anal right. on on the first, first session. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, on a work trip. Yeah, yeah, yeah so I know. Cheap. Yeah, I mean, it's this cardboard beds. <laughs> Look, maybe you cop a glance at some side yeah. boob or something, but that's anal, quite an escalation. You know, work. Yeah, a, you that know, a coworker. Quickly. That's a fucking tall one right yeah. there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, so we we heard about this kid and uh, by the way, yeah. you, you never go anal first first date. <laughs> you never go anal be, because when you're cheating, mm. you can't go anal. Do tell why? Tell you why. Been married to a woman for fourteen years. Mm-hmm. She's got a pretty good idea of which way the wind is blowing <laughs> anally. Under lock and key. Do you know what I'm saying? The the, the, the pattern has been established. It's it's look. Here's the thing about uh, uh, Brian. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, no. Inexplicably, he doesn't like um, grapefruit. Yeah, does mm-hmm. not like grapefruit. If you're accused of stealing grapefruit, mm. no one would believe it. And if we said to Christy, yeah. like he's ready, she'd be like, "Not, no, that's, not, that's not, the other wrong guy. Not a thing." But what if you're accused of stealing a USC jersey oh. or something? I could say, yeah, that's... The prints are all that over that. certainly sounds like... Well, <laughs> if Matt Lauer's begging his wife for anal every Friday night, and, it's and then the anal... Fuck a grapefruit? <laughs> you know what I mean? A microwave grapefruit. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, you make a solid point. This is why you always have to... You eat a ton of pussy yep. and you go, tell me as many stories as you can about yourself. Mm-hmm. And then, so you can cover your tracks your later. Your long-suffering <laughs> wife, oh, that is not. And keep no that bottle covered way. up. No <laughs> stories about her. No pussy. No, not eat. No. no, you got the wrong no, guy. You got the wrong guy. <laughs> you go anal. It's a tell. That right. sounds like my man. Mm-hmm. This is all making sense. Mm-hmm. Wow, truth teller, you're right. Mm-hmm. Uh, so prosecutors in Oakland County, Michigan, have charged the parents of the 15-year-old shooter who killed four students oh, at Oxford High good. School on Tuesday. I've always yes. said this. Yeah, so let me just give you a little info. I also heard a little more coming in. Jennifer and James Crumbly, those are the parents, are charged with four counts of involuntary manslaughter for making the murder weapon available to their son. Um, prosecutor Karen McDonald called their actions far beyond negligence. Uh, James Crumbly, the father, purchased the gun just four days before the mass shooting. I heard on the way here it was a Christmas present for the son. Oh, it's unclear exactly how the son how the son got the gun. The son is charged with murder, terrorism, and other crimes. I was listening to, I want to say, Up First, and they said um, it was a Christmas present to the kid. It wasn't locked up, though that's not illegal in Michigan. And a lot of like weird shit like... The son who, whatever his name is, I didn't, I don't want to include it, said, um, like, he was drawing these really disturbing pictures and, like, like bloody people and, like, a bullet and says, like, something like, I don't have anything to live for. And the school notified the parents and they were, like, uninterested. Mm-hmm. And I, the mom at one point even um, texted him, like, LOL. And it was just, yeah, like, yeah. they were not. She said LOL and she's like, you got to pretend or fake yeah. or you got to do a better job right. of hiding your tracks or whatever. It's pretty damning shit. Um, so I, who have been saying uh, since 1995 on Loveline, uh, sorry, parents. I, I want the parents held liable 
for crimes. And, uh, you know, it's like, look, once a kid passes 18 or moves out of the house or whatever, becomes emancipated, so be it. But I look at your kid as your your dog. Extension. You're basically your pet. If you got yeah. a dog that's prone to biting and you leave the gate open and the dog gets down the street and yeah. bites the toddler, uh, that's on you. Yeah. And, and I would... First things first, but look, there's no way to prevent, there's no real way to prevent school shootings or mall shootings or, you know, country Western concert <laughs> shootings. Look, we're, there's no way to fully police it. You just can't. You just, it's, it's unpreventable. As long as there are people who want to leave their house with a gun and do this. Now, there is someone who lives at that house with mm-hmm. those people who want to live. It's a... It's a home front sort of prevention yes. thing. Uh, we can do crime that involves, you know, putting up bars and having cops, you know, in front of the jewelry store, like that, that, that kind of sort of maybe even like your bank robbery sort of stuff, maybe a little bit. But uh, these kinds of random, indiscriminate, whatever, uh, the only one who really prevents that are the parents. Right. And... <clears throat> We need to deputize those parents, but really what we we need to do is get some skin in the game with these things because nobody wants their son to go to prison, but n- no one wants them to go to right. prison. And if that's out, you know, when you put that on the parent, like, hey, man, this little kid goes nuts and guess what? You'll be, you won't have to visit them in prison. Every day will be a visiting right. day for right. you. It'll be the shower. <laughs> uh, I think you would certainly motivate more parents to like any parent, like you do with a dog. When right. you just, when you realize you got a dog that, you know, snapped at the mailman mm-hmm. and stuff, then there's like, don't leave the door the open. Game. Don't yep. leave the gate open. Like, it's a little, yes. you have your head's a little bit on a swivel. Now, unfortunately I will then take this also and steer it into whatever the kid was in Chicago who was shot and killed because it was like three in the morning and he was just firing guns into the firing rounds into the community. And he was like 13 in the, uh, on the playground or whatever. No, he was, he was, it was, it was a shots fired thing. Okay. Chris can look it up. He, it was this very split second thing where he was running and he was like lifting the gun up and a cop shot him. It was another shot. All right, that kid's 13. It's uh, Wednesday, so 4.45 in the morning. Wait, well, hey, parent, yeah, where, what's, where, what's that kid yeah. doing? And and then you go, now that parent would go, by the way, the, the, the people that want these parents locked up probably don't want that parent locked up. I would say if you got a kid, he's out there with a gun, and he's wreaking havoc in the community, let's just get on the same page. That's fair. Now, the parent would say, I can't control the kid. I can't control the kid. Mm -hmm. Probably in the inner city story, I can't control. Uh, Fine. Then you got to go to the police Mm -hmm. and you got to go, I got a son. Mm -hmm. He's got a gun. He's running around. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Yeah. And that reminds me that Dylan Klebold's mother, remember he was one of the Columbine Mm -hmm. guys. She's, She's been on a speaking tour for years. She does TED Talks. She does tours. And oh, I, really? I don't know that. Oh, yeah. She's I in that horse show, I think. Yeah, she's in Cavalia. <laughs> That's part where we bring it <laughs> sure, down. Sure, sure, sure. You know and I mean? and I, I think that there's, I would imagine there's merit to that. I would imagine there's something to it. I mean, you know, but. Is she talking about gun violence? I just have to assume. Yeah, and about, you know, how, how. I've seen literally a five minute TED Talk, but mm-hmm. I know she does these. And it was. Not really absolving her, but like, you know, how we had a normal house and you never sure. know and, you know, pay attention to your kids. But I, 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 you know, Sonny's getting to that school shooting age Wait, and, what? uh, I, you know, he hangs out with his buddies and eats like hamburgers and watch goofy movies. Like, I, I feel like if he was, had a dark glasses and a hoodie on, you know, dressed like the Unabomber and was scribbling out swastikas stickers everywhere with blood and stuff. Like, I, I'd have some feelings. Mm-hmm. I, I think I'd know. And then he's like, I'm going to purchase an AR-15. Like, I I think I would know. Yeah. You would know. I'm going to give a recommendation for a really excellent documentary called Far From the Tree, as in mm. the apple forest, far, far, far from the tree. A couple years ago, it's about like five kids, all of whom are vastly different from the parents. Some have mm-hmm. de- developmental disabilities. Some are uh, like uh, dwarfs, like primordial dwarfs, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And mm-hmm. There's one story about uh, a kid who pr- pulled off a, 
a horrific crime, a horrific murder, and his parents are featured in the documentary. He's in prison, you know what I mean, for killing this little kid. And the parents are, by all means, you know, just normal, mm. cheerful people. Not cheerful, you know what I mean? Normal right. people, you just, you're next door neighbors. And the point is, so, there's shades of gray, man. Sometimes kids can be just, you know, just go off the deep well, end. Well, yeah, so here's the... But do you notice or not? Well, here's... I it mean, alluded to some warning signs. There's and, outlier kind of... The, the problem with kind of how we are as a society now where, you you know, we keep going, you know, two parents focus on education and someone goes, I know a black kid. Yeah. His dad was a junkie. He was in prison. All the guys at Harvard right now. It's like, yeah, okay, yep. get it. There are it, exceptions. It, it happens. Yeah. When there's kids that just sheer lug nut and go on a killing sprees. But I say in general, mm-hmm. it, it certainly... We could cut into school shootings and gang shooting. We could we could put a we could take a real bite out of crime here if this was something mm-hmm. that was sort of universally applied. But more importantly, uh, Max Pana, you know any horses? I think yeah about horses. Um, the the magazine, the uh, Ferrari owners magazine, the prancing horse. I think it's called Cavallino. Ooh. Oh, look at you. So Cavallo. Mm. Cavalier or whatever. Cavalia. Whatever, uh. Cavalia, whatever it is, it's got something to do with a horse, mm-hmm. I figured out, mm-hmm. through watching 10 minutes of horses. Mm-hmm. But also, the, I can make some connection between the Cavallino and the Cavallo. Mm. That's, uh, Cavalry? That's my, ooh, oh. Gina. Uh, March uh, 2021, uh, Adam Toledo... 13-year-old Latino American boy shot by Chicago PD, body cam here, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, it was three okay. in the morning and he was just, they, call, they called the cops because he was firing rounds in the city at, oh at 13. <laughs> by the way, probably never had a bar mitzvah. What? But I would argue probably. when my buddy Nate Wittenberg turned 13, he was much less man than this uh, young guy <laughs> was firing. <laughs> All right, let's bring it home, Gina Grad. You got it. I'm Gina Grad, and that's the news. Any orifice is whatever. Gina, Gina Grad. That was the news with Gina Grad. Yeah, what's the origins of the cavo? That must be some horsey. Because you're right. Cavalry, Cavalino, Cavallo. Cavallo is Latin for horse. There we go. There you go. <laughs> All right, last but not least, there's Fight Camp. Want to make 2022 your best year yet? revolutionize how you work out fight camp you can uh, learn to box and kickbox and do it at home world-class programming elite trainers uh, premium equipment and uh, smart tech thousands of classes new workouts added each week fight camp provides real-time data during your workout so you can uh, track your progress Work toward uh, guided goals and see just how much you're improving. And you don't get bored because when you're just running on a treadmill, it's so endless. This is you actually exercising your brain and your body. Full body workout, best of cardio and strength training, all in one. And uh, all the gear you need, freestanding, punching bag, boxing gloves, it's all there at Fight Camp. All right. You can go to amcroll.com. A live show's coming up, Improv, December 15th. Taping shows there with TJ Miller and Patrick Warburton. Patrick's almost sold out, but TJ, we got some tickets left for. And then us uh, heading out to Portland, December 22nd, 23rd. Four shows, doing it live. And you can check out our chassis channel, 687 on Pluto TV. All free. Lots of good docs there. So, until next time, it's Adam Carolla, Gina Grad, and Bob Ryan say it. Mahalo. He himself is a rare species in the world of theater. A Donald Trump voting conservative from a small town in Alabama with a deep passion for avant-garde European theater. Oh my. Wow. A unicorn. Yeah. In his home office, he stores pens in a mug that reads, Liberal Tears. <laughs> <laughs>